Hello everyone, we hope you're all doing very well. Today we're looking at unguided bombing in the F-16 Steve. We're going to cover CCIP bombing and CCIP post-designation bombing. So two different types of bombing here. CCRP and other methods will be looked at in separate videos. We'll look at dropping conventional high drag bombs, conventional low drag bombs and cluster munitions. And we'll look at three different ways of doing this. So we're going to open my armament screen up. We can have bombs on pylons three, four, six, and seven. So CBU-87, this is a cluster munition. The canister holds 200 sub-munitions. These sub-munitions have no guidance and will spread over an area of target as designated by its profile, which we have a look a little bit later. This is suitable for infantry and very light armor. CBU-97, but instead of 200 sub-munitions, we now have 40 sub-munitions. These are heavier warhead munitions and are IR-guided. So these are intelligent sub-munitions suitable for heavy armor. This is guided. This is guided, so we're not looking at those today. Mark 82, 500-pound conventional low-drag bomb. The same but retardable version. So this can be high-drag or low-drag. The same but with parachute high-drag. Mark 82, 2,000 pound conventional slick low drag bomb. Next we have a series of pylon adapters that allow us to carry multiples of the bomb. So 2 times CBU 87, 2 times 97, 2 times Mark 82 series, 3 times BDU 33. These are training bombs, they have a small smoke warhead, they mimic the same kind of flight profile as normal bombs but they're for training only and similar thing but this time with threes. So because we want to show you as much as we possibly can in one video, pylon three and seven are going to be, each of them, three times Mark 82 Snake Eye. Pylon six is going to be two times CBU 97, so the 40 submunition intelligent submunition versions, two of them. And pylon four is going to be, how about two times 500 pound low drag bombs. Now I'm going to bring up on the screen how we're going to organize today's drops. Our first pass will be six times Snake Eyes. We'll be doing this at low altitude level bombing using basic CCIP targeting. We'll be doing a ripple, so they'll be coming off in a pulse ripple. We'll have a look at that in a minute. For this, we'll be using profile number two. We can have up to two bomb profiles on the F-16C, and we're going to show how we can make use of that. The next drop will be two times CBU-97 from high altitude 20 degree dive. Basic CCIP single drop using profile one and thirdly two times mark 82 low drag this will be high altitude dive and we'll be using ccip post designate bombing technique for this which is different to ccip but we'll still be using the f-16 profile number one with this we can show just about everything that we can do with these bombs Hey, we're armed up. Now we need to do our setup, our bomb setup. We would usually do this in the air, but to make it easier for this video, we're going to do it on the ground. So imagine we were in the air. We're going to go our master arm on. We're going to go air to ground. This turns the right MFD to our stores management page. We're going to set, first of all, the six times Mark 82 snake eyes up. We're going to set it up on profile two. So click here for profile two. Do we want to drop them in singles or in pairs? So we can have singles or we can have pairs. That means each bomb drop pulse would send out a pair. We're going to go singles. We're going to be doing a ripple of six bombs and we want a spacing between impacts of 150 feet. In fact, let's just knock it up to 200 feet. I'm going to click here. 200. Enter. I can always backspace there or quit with return there. Okay. How many pulses do we want to send to these bombs? Basically, how many bombs do we want to drop? I want to drop all six. Six enter. Note that if we have this here set to pairs then we would only want to send out three pulses because each pulse will drop one pair of bombs and we've got six of these bombs to play with. The bombs are working and ready. The system is working and ready. Next we need to set our fusing up. Our fusing affects how the drag of this weapon is going to work. Nose tail gives us high drag. Nose gives us low drag tail gives us high drag we're going to go for nose tail high drag next we need to choose our aiming technique we're going to click here and we can choose from ccip ccrp dive toss low altitude drogue delivery we think that's for nuclear and manual we're going to use ccip for this video a quick check and that is our snake eye set up for a ripple with 200 feet in between each drop 
Now we're going to go to our next weapon and set that up. That is the two times slick Mark 82s. We're going to go to profile one for this. So we want one drop per bomb pulse. This here doesn't matter because we're only sending one pulse out. So there's no such thing as an interval in this case. The bomb is ready. The system is ready. Our fusing can be nose, tail or nose, tail. So I better explain this. These Mark 82s have a crush fuse on the nose and on the tail. If we want either of those fuses to detonate the bomb, we have nose tail. If we want the nose to set the bomb off, that. If we have the tail to set the bomb off, that. The reason you might want tail, for instance, is if you want the bomb to penetrate the target before blowing up. For instance, making craters in runway, you will put your tail fuse on. If you want maximum spread of frag, then you will go to nose because the bomb will explode when it's still above the ground, sending its frag out in different directions. So those are the reasons why we do want to do that. I, if I don't have any specification for which, I will go for nose tail. Profile one is a good setup. Next, we'll go to our next bomb and set it up. Oops. It is our two times CBU 97s. And we're gonna use profile one again. Everything's already set up. I just want a single drop with a single pulse. What I'll do is just press the uh, pulse button twice in this case to drop two bombs. I'm gonna go for nose tail in this case. Note that the fusing has an effect on our cluster munitions. Nose tail means that our canister munition will drop off the aircraft complete and at this altitude set here, currently 500 feet from the ground, it will separate into its sub munitions. This can be changed but not at the moment, October 2019. That's something that will come a bit later, so just bear that in mind. If we click on nose, then the sub munitions will leave the canister as soon as they drop off the pylon, giving maximum spread. If we have tail, then it disarms the bomb and it's a dud. I have no idea why, that's just the thing. So, almost certainly you're always gonna give nose tail so that we can change the height at which the sub munitions separate from the canister. And the only other thing I want to point out is that if we're going to have an air to ground loadout like this and or if we're having fuel tanks then we have to have our stores combi set to cat 3 otherwise our fly by wire won't be set up suitably for carrying these weapons and we can cause damage to our aircraft. So cat 3 if you've got air to ground ordnance. We're going to take off, look for a target, and then I'm going to attack the target and explain the symbology. Stand by. Okay, we're in the air now. We found some targets in front of us. So we've got our six times Mark 82 Snake Eye set up. I've got Profile 2 set up. We're all good to go. This is going to be a low level, level CCIP bombing. Before we do that, I need to explain some symbology. Just going to get in a nice dive here and stop. We've got a path marker here. That is where our aircraft is flying. We've got a bomb full line here which traces the fall of our bomb. We've got here our CCIP PIPA. This is where, if we were to press the bomb re weapon release button, which I better show you quickly, push and hold that, is where the bomb will drop and it would hit the ground where this PIPA is intersecting the ground. So, you know, there. But that's not, actually not quite accurate because this PIPA is currently actually off the bottom of the HUD. It's actually somewhere down here. We know that because our timing queue is here. That's this little left to right line here. So we can tell that this here is actually lower down because our timing queue is here. Now, what happens as this PIPA rolls its way slowly up the screen and that's going to happen as we get lower as you'll see is that this timing queue will go down and down and down and down and down and when it disappears is when this guy here the ccip pipper will start moving up the screen that's when it's if you like actually on the screen and ready for ccip bombing we will also have a pull-up queue i haven't got it on the moment it is a little u-shape a little upside down staple like i'm drawing here as i get lower it will move up the screen it's completely harmless until it gets to the path marker here if we haven't dropped the bombs by the time that the pull-up queue passes the path marker here then we can no longer drop the bombs. The bombs will then no longer fuse and it will become a useless drop. That will only happen if we go very low and we're pointing towards the ground. So in a dive when going very low. So it's something that you have to think about. I'm not sure slant range is too important, but we do have a slant range. That is a range from us through our CCIP pip there to the ground currently here at 1.1 miles. That may come in handy. You can tell, check which kind of bombing we're in. We're in CCIP at the moment as we set. We can tell we've got our master arm on there so that's it for the symbology for basic ccip the way we're going to do this is i'm going to go down i'm going to get to 450 knots which is our optimal bomb dropping speed at pretty much any type of dropping and we're going to fly down the line of the targets they are going to be a line of targets a line of tanks or, or jeeps or whatever they are down there 
I'm gonna fly over them at about 500 per feet. It's safe to fly low like that if we have high drag bombs and we can check we do have high drag bombs set up. I'm going to ensure that the timing view here has got off the bottom of the screen and that the CCI reticle or pipper here has moved up the screen. I'm then going to fly so that the CCI pipper is in the middle of where our ripple of bombs will be. So I'll place it in the middle of the stretch of vehicles basically at which point I will press and hold the weapon release button as we saw earlier and I will not release that button until I'm sure that all six bombs are off. I will know when all six bombs are off because our path marker here will begin to flash. This is usually you'd uh, you'd usually use CCRP for something like this but CCIP in this aircraft is very dynamic very good to use so we can use this fine. Quick check around while I've got everything here yep. You'd also pair this up with countermeasure release program in case there were IR SAMs in the area, but we're not going to do that today because we know we're not going to get shot. A little too fast. Most bombing is programmed to work with 450 knots, so it's something we want to stick to if possible. The, you can see the queue, the uh, pull-up queue down there, not really knowing what to do because it can't work out what I'm doing and that's fine. It won't become a problem. Wait for it and drop. Wait. Pull up. Boom! So that's put all six bombs out with 200 feet in between each bomb. And it's done a lot of damage, we can see. Now, I'm going to... Oh, lovely. I'm going to go and watch um, RC bomb now. Stand by. If you can do the latter ones, that would be good. Uh, release. What, John? Oh, it's beautiful. Did you release all of them, RC? Oh, you know what? You failed. Okay, well that is, um, yeah, that's an example of how not to do it. He had the, he had the wrong yeah. profile set. He had profile one set instead of profile two. So it's just something to be careful of. Right, RC, um, I'm going to get set up for my next round now. So what I'm going to do next is use my uh, Mark, uh, my CBU 97. These are the intelligent cluster bombs. I'm going to, don't forget to change the profile. Very important to change the profile. I've now set to basically single drop with nose tail CCRP we're ready to go I'm going to go get altitude now then come back the dive wants to be at 20 degrees so when we're diving down we want to have our path marker and our gun cross here our board sight roughly positioned in the minus 20 degree pitch area it doesn't have to be totally accurate but it's a good guide our altitude of dive wants to be from at least 6,000 feet AGL much higher is much better because we get more time to aim and our speed again 450 knots always just think 450 knots for bombing okay we're turning into target now we're 9,000 10,000 feet AGL that's completely fine our speed is low but we're going to get the burner on for a second and we should get that up everything is going to be as before note the time EQ heading down waiting for the CCIP pipper to emerge I'm going to drop two bombs separately but I'm going to drop them very close to each other so they're going to act as a pair of bombs basically Careful not to drop too low, too low with a cluster bomb and it will become a dud. But um, I don't expect it to be a problem. Note, I'm going to pause here, RC. Note my technique. My path marker where I'm actually flying is right up here, even though the target is down there. And that's a good way of doing this. I will dip my nose down a bit because I'm coming down on a slightly low trajectory here. I really should be down about 20 degrees, but that's just how it's worked out in this case. And what I'm going to do is once this CCIP pepper comes onto the screen, I'm going to drag it up. And as it passes the target, that's when I do... Uh, the press. And I'm going to do two quick presses. Altitude. Dive down a bit. It's a bit better. Right, I'm now going to head up. I'm going to drag that up a little and release, release. Head up. I'm going to turn my autopilot on. Wow, I just caught them spreading. And look at that for timing. I literally just caught them spreading. So each one of these canisters is full of about five or six pucks. These pucks are, like I said, IR guided. I've never got that shot before in all of my DCS. So that's pretty cool. The IR guided and uh, watch what happens and set your face to stun. There they go. Oh, it's a thing of beauty. I should say that no humans were damaged in the making this video unless I crash. If I wanted a bigger spread on those pucks, what I could have done is changed my, uh, if I go back in here, I could have changed uh, the setting in the middle there. But like I said, it's currently not available. So something to bear in mind. Go in when you're ready, RC. I'm going to come and watch your bomb. That shows the destructive power of the CBU-97. We're not sure if we're going to get the CBU-107 or not. Uh, the 105, sorry. That would be a wind-corrected version of the CBU-97, which allows us to drop in very high altitudes 
with wind correction. So we'll just have to see how that goes. It might be something we get. Release. Roger. Put myself on autopilot. There goes the 97. Pucks are out. 80 pucks. Sorry, they're, not, they, uh, they're the puck holders, aren't they? And these will split into 80 pucks. Yeah. Something happened with those You just took... Oh, no, it doesn't matter. Oh, you missed again, I see. Let's see if it, they're still here. I was right on top. Yeah, but... it maybe multiplayer desync or something, but for me it's missed by miles. What they do, they'll explode into the air and they might just fluke a few of those things. You never know. And that's not going to work. Never mind. Next, I'm going to show, if I'm still alive, and I am, the last type of bombing, which is CCIP post-designate. This is something that's actually completely different. Um, so I'm going to just set myself up quickly. I need my two Mark 82 slicks. I've got Profile 1 selected. And that's all I need. I'm going to go around and see if I can finish off some of those targets. Now, the, the beauty about post-designate CCIP is that it allows us to drop bombs on a target when the CCIP pipper here is off the bottom of the HUD, like it is now. You can see the timing queue is active. Uh, that means we can drop bombs when you would not normally be in parameters for a normal CCIP drop. It's a really good thing. It's not as accurate as pure CCIP. But it's pretty cool. In fact, it's technically a hybrid between CCIP and CCRP. We want to come in for a decent dive again. So again, the same parameters as usual, above 6,000 feet, 20 degree dive and 450 knots. And what I want to do is get this CCIP pipper here onto the target while our timing queue is still in play to do this post-designate technique. It can be a little awkward. So this is technically an invalid CCIP drop, but it is bloody useful. Now, just uh, stand by as I get this sorted. So I'm going to walk my CCIP pipper up now while the, C uh, the timing line's in queue. And I'm going to try and talk to everything. And I'm going to press and hold weapon release now. Now we're going to get to steering line. It's critical that I now keep my path marker here directly on the steering line until this guy here drops down and passes the path marker. And I think that might have already dropped. Has it did a drop? Oh, it had. <laughs> and bang on cue. Let's see if we can talk a bit better about that. Um, yes, I can. Right. So uh, I'm not doing it now, but I'm just showing. Pressing and holding like this, the bomb fall line becomes a steering line here. The idea was, while pressing and holding, it actually becomes technically a CCRP type bomb drop, a, a constantly computed release point. The, the idea then is to keep our path marker here centered perfectly on the steering line, which is easier than said. Your altitude doesn't really matter. Keep roughly level or roughly in the same dive and keep the same speed and wind level as possible. At a certain point near to the target, just before the bomb drop, this line here will drop. When it drops, it will drop past the path marker here and then the bomb will drop. It can happen very quickly like it did there. So I didn't even get time to talk about it or really see it. So when this line here starts dropping down, it's the last few seconds before the bomb drop. You do not decide when the bomb drops. The computer decides when the bomb drops, hence the CCRP. So that is what we call a CCIP post designate. And hold weapon release now. Now we'll get to steering line. It's critical that I now keep my path marker here direct. Still got a bomb, another bomb left, but I don't really see much point of going around. We've uh, showed that working. That's as much as we can think of showing with CCIP and CCIP post-designate. I hope that helps and see you later.